Today is the Sunday, the Advent of Peace, and let me begin by just making a statement as we uh, address this issue today, that all around us, that is, all around us, there are families that are in need of peace, amen, right? Amen. But all around us, our country, the United States of America, is in need of peace. Amen. Amen. That's right. Also, if we go a little bit broader, we realize the world that we inhabit is in need of peace. It is a problem that is going on. Peace is needed. We can also say and just acknowledge that Israel is in need of peace. We need to know that. There's a lot of things that have been going on for years and it continues to go on. And so we just need to uh, address it and realize that God is the one that offers us peace. We began to look at the things that are happening that somehow disrupts the peace that mankind has. Disobedience, big problem. Disobedience, hatred, a lot of hatred, even this time of year. Matter of fact, if you paying attention to the news, you heard about some of the shootings at the malls while people were Christmas shopping and all. What a, a sad situation that somebody just had to be a little hateful and do that. Self-centeredness we have happening. Pride is happening all around us. And all these have been a problem, not just since recently, but all these have been a problem from the first time man, mankind, walked away from God. Is there something in that picture there in the garden when Adam and Eve disobeyed God that somehow the peace aspect just left and we began to see that hatred began to arise in the hearts of individuals? Pride is a problem. Pride is going on back in the beginning as we look at Genesis or talk about Genesis. So we begin to see that the problem goes all the way back to the days and times in which uh, we have the creation process. Christmas, the season that we are in, is God's desire to give back to mankind peace. That's what Christmas is all about. How do we know that? Well, we turn to the Gospel of Luke and you begin to see the encounter that took place many years ago there at the very first Christmas. We know that uh, the wise men were uh, taught or given the message in, in uh, Matthew, but in Luke uh, chapter 2, we know that this is the area of the the shepherds experience in their relationship with Jesus Christ or with a message from God. And what happened there in Luke chapter 2, beginning with verse 13, the Bible says, and suddenly, now we need to keep that in mind, this was a sudden event. This was an event that happened very rapidly. We might relate that the coming again of Jesus Christ is going to happen in a very rapid form. And there will not be peace on earth at that time because there will be turmoil. There will be panic. There will be people not knowing what to do because their loved one is gone. Just all of a sudden vanished. We call it the rapture. But the Bible says there in Luke chapter 2, and suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, now listen to what they say. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace, and on earth, peace. Do you understand that peace today is not on earth? There is a problem, and that problem is not from God, but it is a problem that mankind has. So we began to see that. And it says, on earth, peace, good will towards men. 
So let's explore for a moment. Let's take just a moment and answer some questions con uh, around the subject of peace. Let me ask this, and I want you to think within your own mind, your own hearts, is peace really possible? Is peace possible? And I see some of the individuals who are uh, with us today who are kind of shaking their heads and in reality, you are right no matter which way you shook your head, okay? We're going to address both of those issues because the first answer is no. Peace is not possible because we understand, we know that mankind will always have some form of turmoil going on. Even um, sometimes, I might say it sadly though, even amongst our friends, there's turmoil that goes on. We take things the wrong way, they say things the wrong way, and the peace that we've had for many years is just all of a sudden severed, and we realize that happens. We know that in the days of the birth of Jesus Christ, that there was somewhat of a calm in the, the announcement of what the angels did but we know that very shortly there following, Herod the king became angered. Why did he become angry? Herod, there was kind of a peace in the city. Everybody knew what to do and not to do, or you was in trouble. But Herod became so angered that he was, we'll say, use the word betrayed by the wise men about that birth of the king. And anger just stirred up inside of him that he put to death all children, boy, male children, up to the age of two years of age. Now that's, that's, that's how rapidly things can change. And so we realize that. We, uh, as citizens of America, we have had short periods of peace. Through, I mean, you know, from having the wars. But you know what happens? War comes again. Do you know that we are in such a day and time that war is happening all around us? It is happening not only on foreign land, but it is happening here among us. People are hating one another because you're a Republican, you're a Democrat, you're an independent. And it is just such a turmoil that just keeps all this where, where's the peace at? So you're right if you said, that there is no peace, no peace possible to happen because that is the way that we're looking at it. And true, mankind will always have problem because of the pride, the jealousy, the disobedience, the hatred that's in the hearts of individuals. But the second answer, I told you that if you shook your head, yes, you was right. If you shook your head, no, you was right. The second answer is yes. And I'm not referring to the man to man's peace because that's what we're going to, we experience constantly. Because in the word of God, we began to see in John chapter 14, the Bible announces to us, these are Jesus's words. And he says these words, he says, peace, I leave with you. Now this is coming from Christ himself. He is about to leave and to uh, suffer the death of the cross, go to the grave, and therefore, after the death, he is buried, and then we have the resurrection. But Jesus says this, peace I leave with you. My peace, that is Christ's peace. So if we want to know, is peace available? It's not available between man on man. It comes from a relationship with God. So he says, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, giveth it. He says, I give it differently. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. So peace is coming to us, is offered to us through Jesus Christ. And we begin to realize that God's peace is different. Jesus' words tell us it's different. How is it different? Well, let me say this first, that God's peace is offered by God. Okay, God is the offer of peace. When he created mankind, it was peaceful time. 
Man rebelled, man uh, rejected God, disobeyed God. And then we have all the chaotic things that have happened ever since up until this day. But we can have peace because of the relationship between us and God was broken because of sin. We can have peace with God. God wanted to restore that to us as we know by the announcement of the angels there in Luke chapter 2. He wanted peace to come to every individual. So God's peace is offered by God. God offers it. You can reject it. Many have rejected it. Many are still struggling today to try to find out what Christmas is all about, what hope is all about, what joy is all about, what love is all about. And the truth is, until they get peace with God, they will never have none of those things. So, God's peace is offered by God. God sent His Son. He became flesh. He lived. He died. He arose from the grave. You want peace? It doesn't come man to man. It comes from God to man. God offers you peace. But also God's peace is undeserved. You don't deserve it. Not a one of us are good enough to deserve the love that God has for us. That's why we have the announcement given to the shepherds, you know, that there is a birth. Undeserved mankind, like us, can receive the peace that God offers to us. So peace is undeserved. All can experience it. He's not excluded any of you. Nobody. He doesn't exclude. He invites all to come. He invites the wise. He invites the, the, uh, the workers out there in the field. He invites all people to come to experience the joy of Christmas, the birth of his Savior. Thirdly, in the area of God's peace being differently, we find that God's peace is everlasting. I mentioned that we've experienced, or I know in my lifetime I've experienced, uh, in our world, America was at peace. We had nothing to uh, fight about for once. And, you know, uh, I was raised in there in the process of the Vietnam War. Some of you were as well. And it was at the point to where um, people were having to, you know, sign up for the draft in order to be drafted. And if that war continued many length of, more length of time. But I, I realized that when that ended, and by the way, that was really not classified as a war, but it was a war, no matter what you think. It was a war. Anytime countries against country, that's a war. You can call it what you want. What's going on in Israel is a war, and we need to understand that. But what I'm saying is, in my lifetime, I've experienced that war ended, and now, hallelujah, churches were excited. We've got peace. Finally, we've got peace. No more wars. Well, Unfortunately, that didn't last. We had more wars. Some of you remember. Just constantly. But when God brings peace, it's everlasting. Because we realize I didn't deserve it. I didn't earn it. It was given by God to me. And therefore, I will trust him and it is an everlasting peace that no one can take from you. So let me ask the question. How can I, how can you bring about peace? Can we really make a difference where we live to bring about peace? What about within the family problems, the chaos that's there? Siblings that have not talked one to another in 15, 20, or even 30 years or plus years. Can we bring about the peace into the lives of the families that are just, uh, broken? Or the country that's broken? Or Israel in the situation that's broken? Can we bring about peace in these situations? Colossians chapter 3, verse 15 and 17 says this, these words. And let 
the peace of God rule in your hearts. Now stop there for a moment because that's part of the key that we need to begin to see. The first thing that can bring peace to others will not happen until you personally have peace with God. That's the beginning. So that's why we have, and let the peace of God rule in your hearts to the which also you are called in one body and be ye thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms, in hymns, and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatsoever, here's the key, and whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by Him. So, as I said, first, you can't bring peace to others until you have peace. And I'm going to ask, basically, do you have peace with God? Because if you don't have peace with God, the temporary peace that you have with others is going to somehow get pushed away. Secondly, consider the value of other people. Isn't that what God did on Christmas? He considered the value of all mankind. He considered the value of the Jews. We know that Jesus went and he preached to the Jews. He shared with the Jews and the Jews more or less just pushed him aside, didn't want nothing to do with them. Matter of fact, we often blame the Jews for persecuting Jesus Christ and putting Jesus to death, but Jesus died to bring peace to me. So consider the value. Everyone can receive the peace that God has to offer. Christ loved all, and we should love all people as well. And if you want to bring peace to others, it's going to be to where you begin to consider everybody valuable. Not, well, they're less than I am. Or looking down. Or making rash judgments about the type of person they are. So we begin to see this. The third aspect. What we realize is in order to bring peace into this world that we live in, it's going to be when we begin to proclaim the good news about Jesus Christ. Amen. We need to proclaim it. We need to be living it. We need to be an example for others. We need to let people know why we have joy in our hearts when they just don't understand what's going on. They're troubled. They're worried. They're concerned. They're fretting. And when they have that relationship with Jesus Christ, we can know and we can understand and share with them that the good news is that Christ, Christ cares about what they're going through. And he knows exactly what they're going through because Jesus experienced it himself. And I want to ask, do you have peace? Do you have peace? Do you know the one who brings peace? Do you know the one that is sent from God on Christmas Day to bring about the peace to the whole world? A baby that was going to be our Savior. How could that be? A baby saving us. It was God's gift to us. We didn't earn it. We didn't deserve it. All you've got to do in order to claim the present is just receive it. Take it to yourself. Open it. Look at it. Rejoice with what Jesus Christ did for you. Do you have peace? Do you know the one who brings peace? Jesus brings peace. That's what he said to his disciples. He says that we need to understand peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled. You see, you don't have to be troubled. You don't have to be worried about what's going to happen tomorrow. If you have peace with God today, tomorrow doesn't really matter. Because you're ready today. And in a sudden instant, the angels announced, in a sudden instant, the return of Christ again will happen. 
Are you prepared? Do you have that peace? God's peace was born in a stable. And I want to just come to the area of, of having each of us to pray and just to uh, focus upon our relationship with God. It is a time of emptying yourselves out. If you've got hidden areas in your life that nobody knows about, God knows about it. And this is a time for you just to say, Lord, forgive me. And by the authority of the word of God, he will forgive you. He does it. If you bring it and confess it to him, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. It doesn't matter how many times you've committed the same thing over and over again. He offers us that area of forgiveness. So I'm going to ask that we just take a moment. We go to God in prayer and you just pray if, if, and just say, Lord, forgive me. Lord, come into my life. And I assure you that he will do that. So let's bow in prayer at this time. Father, you are the one that brings peace to this world. You did so. You showed us in the birth of Jesus Christ many years ago. But there are people living among us who have hidden sin in their life. Truth is, they're not going to have genuine peace until they get rid of that sin. So right now, I ask that you reveal to us, you already know it, reveal to us and show us what we need to do. This is an opportunity for us to confess, to turn to you. Because Father, just in a moment, we are going to come and partake of the Lord's Supper and this is an opportunity for us to reflect of the blood of Jesus Christ being offered for us. We realize that. The cleansing of our sin through the blood. Thank you for what you've done. Thank you for hearing the prayers of the individuals who are praying at this time. And we just give you the praise and the glory. In the name of Christ, I pray. Amen. As we prepare for the Lord's Supper, I'm going to give you a few instructions. They're not hard to follow. They are kind of very simple. What I'm going to ask you to do is I'm going to ask that everybody, as you come forward, uh, you will go to this aisle here. You'll come to the front and make your line here, and then you make your way to my right. Be Come across here to the left, partake of the Lord's Supper. And then you can go sit down and be in prayer. You're also, while you're here, you're able to reflect upon the Advent wreath or the, the name Jesus Christ or the cross or the birth, whatever you want to. We want you just to focus upon what Jesus Christ has done for you as an individual. We know what the Word of God says, and we are taught that the Lord's Supper is a very, very special occasion. We know that it reminds us that Jesus uh, said, take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. And that will be the, the wafer that you take, his body, broken for you. Don't look at anybody else. You look at yourself and you say, Jesus did this for me. And then you will take up of the cup and you will begin to drink the cup. And the Bible says, uh, that this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do you as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. We're here to remember Jesus Christ, the birth and the death in order to bring us one word, peace. Peace. We need peace with God. And then we can have peace one with another. I'm going to pray, and after I pray again, if you will just uh, go ahead and stand up. If you don't feel led to come, please just stay where you are. Somebody can get around you, and they can make their way out. Uh, nobody will look at you or say anything about it, but we encourage if you feel led of God, if you are a part of the family of God, if you accepted Jesus Christ and have been baptized, we invite you to come to the Lord's table.
So let's uh, bow in prayer.